Alright, this is Mr. McSwain and we're going to go into another video of configuring devices on the packet tracer. With this uh, video we're going to be configuring a router. Now if you are just joining into this video with this configuration the switch has already been configured. We did that previously and we have configured the PC. So we'll left click on the PC just so I can show you that we have configured it with a 192.168.1.15 it has given us the default class C subnet mask and we'll tack into the one last configuration now is we will actually say the 192.168.1.1 which is going to be the IP address that we are going to give to the router that we configure alright so we click the blue X on that go back make sure one more time that it's still there it is we'll hit the X again and now the PC is ready to go so for this one we're going to go down to the bottom left hand corner to network devices and we're going to go to routers and we're going to pull a 4331 router up onto the window. Alright, now we're going to go over to connections and because this is not a router to router or switch to switch configuration we are going to use a standard straight through cable, patch cable. Now I like to have the cables that are going between intermediary devices to use the gigabit. This is not a hard corded stated method of doing it. This is just my preferred method. All right, so I'm going from the gigabit port on the switch into the first gigabit port on the router. All right, now <clears throat> we already have our console cable going into our laptop. In the previous video, and I will discuss again real quick, there are two ways of configuring any device in Packet Tracer. One is you can left click the actual device itself and then you can go to the CLI interface that is built into the router. Now, this is not a capability in the real world. You cannot access an intermediary device directly. It does require you to connect to it terminally. Now, in order to simulate that in Packet Tracer, I have a laptop that I use as my quote unquote configuration laptop. And what I'm going to do is, is on one end of it to the laptop, I will go from the RS-232 port, which is the COM port. It is a 9-pin COM port, if you've never seen one before. It is similar to an old-school VGA monitor cable, but instead of 15 pins, it has 9. Okay? So, we're going to go from this port on one end of the PC, or the laptop, our configuration laptop, and then we're going to connect the cable into the console cable on the router. Now notice I'm going to the direct console cable and not to the USB cable. That is because I am using the standard old school <coughs> uh, excuse me, console cable that has a COM port on one end and an RJ45 connection on the other. Alright, once I have done that I'm going to left click onto the laptop and then I'm going to go into terminal. Now, in Packet Tracer, we have to use the terminal window. This is the only method of creating a terminal connection, so this is going to be the only method we're going to be able to use in Packet Tracer. Now, in the real world, you can use, there are multiple types of terminal connections that you can establish. The two main ones I suggest are either using TerraTerm, which is a very simplistically built app that allows you to have a terminal connection, or you can utilize the application called PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y, which would allow for terminal connection and various other commands that can be entered like scripting. All right, now when we hit terminal, we're going to go in. We're not going to change anything with the baud rate or anything, so we're going to hit OK, and this is going to take us into the configuration of the router. Now, when you first get into the router, you're going to notice that it is going to prompt you if you want to do the initial configuration dialog tell it no and then hit enter why because if you were to say yes with this it will allow you to configure the router by using a series of prompts similar to a load wizard and it can become pretty configuring or pretty convoluted and confusing very quickly so my suggestion is let's say no so that we can configure this thing similar to the way that we configure the switch all right now with the router, you're going to notice that we're going to immediately enter into user exec mode, and that is user exec mode, which is going to be the same as view only mode. All right. In order to leave this, we're going to type in enable, and that is going to take us into privileged 
exec mode. Now privilege exec mode is basically the equivalent of admin mode. This allows us to make changes into the router as we see fit. Okay. So now you'll notice that whenever we first got into the router that there was nothing stopping us from doing anything as far as accessing it. It just freely jumped from one level to the other. We want to fix that. We want to make sure that we add security to our router along with configuring the device to be able to communicate with other devices with a layer three communication, which is an IP address. All right. So first things first at the privileged exec level we are at the root level this is going to be things that affect the root level so in other words we have to go up one level by typing configure terminal now what this does is make configurations that that will affect the entire router as a whole so in other words this is going to be not affecting individual ports but everything okay so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to establish a name for the router that is more of a deciding factor now previously i came out here with the switch and i labeled it after i labeled it inside but with this one i'm going to do the opposite i'm going to come in and i'm going to call this one router one underscore default gateway all right now when I hit enter on that notice it says router one underscore default gateway but if I come back into my terminal connection and I hit enter nothing's changed it still says router and that is because think of the labeling out here as being kind of like a sticky the sticky note that you put on the outside of a device so this is kind of like using a label maker to put something on the front all right in order to change it inside of the system we're going to type the command hostname which remember that in any kind of configuration that the first word is the command then you have a space and then you have the argument associated to the command now an argument on this one is as we're saying the command is change the host name the argument is is we're going to say we want to change that host name to RT for router one underscore BLD for building one underscore FL one so in other words this description is going to tell me quite uh, you know easily that this router is in the same location as my primary switch okay now one thing about your configurations of your host name is always remember that if you understand what it's saying that it somebody else could understand it as well so be careful with your descriptions that you don't give away too much information as far as where it's located at because that does give you a physical security compromise all right so now with the next thing that we have here we're going to type in a command that i like to type in that it says uh no ip domain hyphen lookup now what does this command do this command is is that whenever you're typing into any cisco equipment this cisco equipment if you type something wrong incorrectly the equipment is going to try to help you by the trying to figure out what you meant to say it's going to try to determine what you were trying to do before it finally just gives up and errors out well this command just basically says hey don't do that just error out let me go on let me type in the next command so it's kind of like telling your router to not try to be google okay so once we've typed that in there it's no longer going to attempt to do that all right so we've given it a host name and we told it not to try to be google in case we mess up in our and we don't type something correctly from this point forward so what do we want to do now well let's go into some security okay so the first thing we want to do is is that when we first got in here and we went from user exec mode with the greater than symbol into the privileged exec mode with the hashtag there was nothing in there we just went straight into admin mode by default and wasn't and we weren't prompted for any kind of password so let's change that so what we're going to say is, is we're going to say enable so whenever the enable command is typed i want you to prompt for the secret which is meaning encrypted password okay this is the only time that the word secret will work in uh utilizing password encryption now you can get the same effect if i were to type the word password however it wouldn't be encrypted it would be in plain text so what we're going to do is, is we're going to type secret and then we're going to give it a basic password for this uh, tutorial and we're just going to use the word Cisco. 
All right. So now let's take a look and see what happened. So I'm going to back out and I'm going to go to exit. And this is going to be as if I first connected to the router. I'm going to hit enter. Notice it immediately takes me into user exec mode. But now I'm going to type enable because I want to go into privileged exec mode, aka admin. I hit enter. Now I'm prompted for a password. Okay, so we're getting somewhere with our security. Now, I just typed Cisco into that password. However, if you notice, that cursor does not move. There are no asterisks. There's nothing to let you know what you have actually typed as far as the password is concerned. So, if you feel like you're like you may have mistyped the password just hit enter let it go ahead and go let it go ahead and error out and then try again don't try to do backspace to see if you can figure out what you typed is you're just going to waste your time so don't do that all right so now we're in privilege exec mode we're going to go back into configure t which is shorthand for configure terminal and there is a lot of shorthand that you can use get used to typing the full command first is what i always like to say all right, so now we've set up some, some security to get into the admin mode, which is awesome. We want that. But did you notice how whenever we first got into the switch, we immediately got into the user exec mode? Well, I don't even want anybody in the user exec mode without being prompted for a password. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in line console zero. Now, line console zero, if I come out here to the router and I left click on it to bring it up so that I can look at it physically, I go to the physical and you'll notice that on the front of a router, now remember this is on the back of a switch, on the front of the router, there is a console port listed right here. This is console zero. Now, you may be asking, why is it called zero? It is called zero because in any kind of network related device or equipment or configurations, zero is a usable number. So, because it is the first one there, you don't say one, you say zero. If there were multiples, it would be zero, one, two, three, four. Not one, two, three, four. All right, so now that we're inside the line, co line console zero, which is the plug that is physically connected right here, we want to establish a password on that port. So we say password, and again, I'm gonna use Cisco because I like to keep it simple for these tutorials. So we've got Cisco. All right, now, the good news is, is we've established a password on that port. The bad news is, however, we are not prompting for that password. So, in order to prompt for that password, we have to use the, ter the command login. All right, now, at this point, I'm going to go into the virtual consoles. Now, we don't have any kind of IP addresses or anything established for the virtual connections yet because we haven't turned on any VLANs and we haven't turned on any ports or anything at a layer 3 level. So, but that doesn't mean that we won't be able to remotely configure later on down the road. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over to line VTY, which is the virtual consoles, which is ports 0 through 15 because there are 16 total virtual lines that can be listed. Now, one thing I want you to notice here is that notice how I have just jumped from the console line into the virtual line. However, there's nothing here that shows me that I did that jump except for the fact that I remember I typed this command. What I like to tell everybody to do is use the term exit to go back one level. Now, you may have noticed earlier that I typed the word end and then this time I've typed the word exit. Exit takes you back one level. End will take you all the way back to the root level. So, you're asking now, well, Josh, you were already in there. Why did we do exit to go back one? Well, now if I type line VTY 0 through 15 and hit enter, now I know for a fact there's no guessing as far as which area I'm in. So, we're going to use the same commands. Password. Cisco prompt for login, and now we have configured uh, security on those connections. So let's take a look and see what that does. So now, as you can see, I'm going to type end to jump all the way back to the root level, and now I'm going to type exit to leave the router. All right, now we're outside of the router as if we first connected to it. So let's see what happens now when I hit enter. As you can see, I'm immediately prompted for a password. Type the password. Now I type enable, and I'm prompted again for another password. All right, so now we've got basic security set into our router so that we can have access into it and we don't have to worry about somebody just immediately jumping in there. 
So now let's go into the rest of the configurations. All right, first thing we're going to do is, is let's go ahead and tell people they cannot access this router. So we're going to say banner message of the day. We're going to do a hashtag for a starting character because remember your starting character has to be the same as your ending character and you don't want to use a character that would be in the command. So with this one is we are going to say do not access this router without permission exclamation point and then my ending character all right so we're going to type end exit and take a look sure enough now if i hit enter bam do not access this router without permission and it prompts for a password okay so again now we've done our basic configurations of doing a little bit of security on it and we have set up a command telling everybody not to access without our permission okay so now we're going to get into configure terminal and it's time to get in and set up some of the other configurations all right so what are we going to do now well we're setting up the default gateway so what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to establish the interface that is going to be the communication from the internal LAN into either another LAN or the outside world. So this is going to be where the computers and the switch is going to go to get information that it needs to do access at a layer 3 level. So what we've got to do now is we've got to configure the interface that we are connecting this to and in this case it's going to be the gigabit port on the initial switch that we're looking at so switch zero in the non moduled connections on the motherboard themselves and then port zero which is the first port remember we count by zero one two three all right so now we hit enter on that and we're in the interface now with this we're going to want to give it an IP address so the command for that one is going to be IP address and we want to give it the 192.168.1.1 this is the default gateway IP address because this is the port that we're configuring as the default gateway now we're going to hit a space because any time that we enter in an IP address into a port we have to say the subnet mask that it is able to speak to with this one we're saying that it is able to speak to a standard class c subnet and that is how we have configured it now i always like to tell everybody that if you can if you can give it an ip address give it a description so unlike with banner message of the day with description it's just anything after the space is part of the description so what I'm going to say is, as far as description, we are going to say that this is the default gateway port. All right, now we've given it a description. Now, I mentioned in the previous video whenever we were configuring a switch that remember that by default, all ports on a switch are on. Okay, this is the opposite with a router. Remember that all ports on a router by default are off so in other words even though we've configured the port we still don't have any communication happening right here so in other words to turn it on a switch or on a router any Cisco equipment does not understand the term on and off it only understands the singular term of shutdown so if shutdown means to turn it off, remember that any configuration command placed onto a switch or a router can be reversed by typing the word no in front of it. So what we've done here is we have said no shutdown. So whenever we hit enter now, we notice that the state has come to up, it is running, and notice that we have started to get a connection going on. All right, we have now done the initial configuration of a router. This is basic configuration. This is giving it passwords. This is giving it a little bit of, of security based into it so we can exit out. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and hit end and go out to the parent level, and we're going to do the command show run, which says show the running config. We want to see what we've done. All right, we can see that we've changed the host name. We can see that we've got the password that is encrypted. And I'm going to hit the space bar to show everything at a page at the time. 
So we're saying we got no IP domain lookup. We have now configured the 00 port. This has been configured as the default gateway port with the IP address. And we're going to hit enter. Now, here's the one thing that I want y'all to notice. For one, we got the banner of the message of the day that we put in, and we've got where we've configured the lines with the passwords. However, we can see the password. It's not encrypted. So we don't really want that. So what are we going to do to fix that? Well, let's go back into Configure T, and we want to start up a service that turns on password encryption. So we can say service password hyphen and because I don't want to spell encryption because I really can't, that I'm going to say, hey, did I, did I type enough of that command that you actually know what I'm talking about? And if I hit tab, it fills in the command. Now note that this only works if you type enough of the command that there's no second guess as to far as what the command could be. So make sure you type at least enough of the command that the switch could figure it out for you. And then you hit the tab key. That's going to give you the full command. And then you hit enter and now we can go back typing end and then show run and we're going to hit the space bar to jump down pretty quickly and now we can see that we are encrypted with our passwords awesome okay so we've now done all of our basic configurations that we need to do for this router and or for this router so we're ready to do some testing However, one thing is, is you may be saying, well, I've given it a password, I've given it a banner, I've given it encryption, I've set up the port, I've turned it on, I can walk away, I'm good. Well, you could, but guess what? If the power is ever lost to this router, all of your configuration would be lost as well. Because whenever you're configuring a router or a switch, you're in running config mode. Now, running config mode is different than startup config. It's because with a startup config, that is in a non-volatile RAM, which is not wiped whenever the machine loses power. The running config, however, is ran in actual RAM, which once the device loses power, it's wiped. So in other words, if this router were to lose power after we've done these configurations, then all of these configurations would be lost. So, what do we do to fix that? Well, at the root level, which we're already at, we're going to type the command copy run start. And what this does is it copies the running configuration on top of the startup configuration. So we hit enter. It's going to ask us for the destination. We just hit enter again for the default. And now we have saved our settings. So now we have fully configured this router to where we can actually do something else with it. What do we want to do? Let's do some testing. So we're going to exit out. We're going to go back in to just the view only state. And what I want to do here is I want to say ping 192.168.1.15, which is what we said for the PC. So let's see what happens. Well, look at there. We had a success rate of 80. Oh, no. Why was it 80? Well, because only four out of five pings went. Now, you may be asking yourself, why did only four out of five pings go? Well, if we do it again, if we hit the up arrow key to pull the same command up and we hit it again, what happens now? Well, now we've got 100%. Okay, this is a good thing. We can do this multiple times just to make sure that it's 100%. But the, original re the reason that the original was only 80% was strictly because all of the ARP tables and MAC address tables and everything else had to be updated with the new information that we've given to these devices. In other words, this is the first time that that router's ever tried to talk to anything. So it's got to reach out and talk to everybody to find out information. That's why the first package dropped. The second packet comes in, third, fourth, and fifth are all good. All right? So with that being said, we have now configured a router. We've tested it. We've made sure that the port is actually live and functioning. And that covers the basics of configuring a router in Packet Tracer. So, I hope you found the video both informative and entertaining, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.